Okay, fabulous. Part two, we are going to be meeting our textbook page scans. Uh, pages 78 through 79 as well as our workbook page scans we're going to be finishing up some of the questions on page 53 that we skipped yesterday and then we'll also do page 54 and again I would like you to do this on your own first because I know you can do it without me right you don't even need to you don't even need to watch this video, right? <laughs> and then when you're done, we can go over the answers together to see what kind of answers you came up with. Great. So let's go ahead and get started with page 53. If you remember, we actually skipped numbers 6, 7, and 9. Okay. So let's see those first. Number 6. The blank of a solution is the amount of solute that is dissolved in a solvent. So the amount of solute, how much sugar or how much powdered uh, flavor or how much salt we put inside water. That is the concentration of a solution, right? So if you wrote that down, you are correct. Great job. Number seven. The ability of a solvent or the water, the ability of a solvent to dissolve a certain amount of solute is called its, well, lucky for us, it's right here, solubility. If you, you probably notice how solubility rhymes with the ability, right? Solubility, ability, ability of a solvent to dissolve something. So number seven is solubility. Okay, last question for page 53, number 9. Learning about matter and its properties helps a Christian obey God's command to love his blank. So why is it important to learn about all this stuff? It's because it helps us obey, obey God's command to love blank. What should we love? Well, let's actually reread the last paragraph on page 79. So it says here, using matter. Often our love is shown by what we do with physical objects. You've learned about matter and some of its properties, but there's much more to learn about matter and how it works. Jesus said that the second great commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Measuring and mixing matter can help you obey the command, even if it is by baking brownies. So by learning about all these things, we actually are obeying God's command to love his creation, or you could say to love our neighbors. To love his creation or right, our neighbors etc because everything has matter god created matter god created everything and everything has matter so by learning about it we're able to actually love each other more and love his wonderful creation okay let's go on to page 54 this is going to be kind of like a more review from everything we learned this week all the way from mixtures the snack mixes all the way to today we learned a lot this week okay number 14 complete the section name three examples of mixtures so this goes all the way to the beginning of the week here are some examples that we looked at a few days ago we got salad that's a mixture fruit salad is a mixture paella the spanish dish is a mixture milk and cereal chickpeas duck bulky trail mix there's so many so obviously there's going to be more than one answer. So go ahead and read your answers and see if it matches the definition of a mixture, which are basic two or more things, two or more substances that are physically combined. So I'm just going to say snack mix, um, nut mix. We also have tteokbokki, right? But again, there are so many answers that you could write for number 14. Now let's go to number 15, all the way down. Okay, name two examples of mixtures that are also solutions. So solutions we talked about today and yesterday. So everything is just mixed evenly throughout, kind of like a soda, right? We kind of talked about that as well. Let me show you, let's go back a little bit. 
So I'm going to go to page 77. So we have soda or soft drink. We also got alloys. So these are the mixtures, the homogeneous, homogeneous mixtures of nickels and different coins. Mixtures of metals, jewelry. We also have here sugar water. And we got some homogeneous mixtures here. Gray coffee, milkshake, chocolate, cold tomato soup, orange juice. So again, lots of different answers for this one as well. Okay, number 16, name three ways mixtures can be separated. So this is kind of from yesterday's reading. So we're gonna go back to page 70. Oh no, not even yesterday. The day before yesterday, right? Yeah, separating substances in mixtures. And this is page 74. So just a quick review, let's kind of look, let's kind of scan through this textbook, okay? So we talked about coins, we talked about snack mixes. How do we separate ingredients from a snack mix? Easy, just separate them by hand, right? Take out all the M&Ms, take out all the pretzels. So the first way we can do it, easiest way we can separate mixtures is to just remove the ingredients from each other or just separate the physical, just the the substances, okay? And then we have dry items by gently shaking them. It says sometimes you can separate dry items by gently shaking them. The smaller items fill in the gaps at the bottom and then the larger items are pushed to the top. So another way is to gently shake dry items. So that's a second way to separate mixture. And we also have well, we kind of talked about the example, this. <laughs> remember this, salt and sand mixture, how do we separate that? If you remember, we talked about how we can dissolve salt in water, but we can't dissolve sand because sand will sink to the bottom. So if we want to separate salt and sand, we would basically put water in it so the salt will dissolve and then boil the water out. So a <laughs> much shorter way to say that is to dissolve the salt to separate it from sand from sand yep so again there are lots of different answers you could have written for this as well because there are many ways to separate so many different kinds of mixtures there are so many ways so these are just the main ones that i put down okay all right, let's finish this. Number 17 through 19 are going to be on what we read today. Concentration, dilute, di diluted substances, solubility, saturation, all that good stuff. So number 17, a solution that is blank has more than the normal amount of solute in it. So in other words, what do you call something when you put not like a little bit of sugar, but little, more than normal amount of sugar when it's a little sweeter than normal. Is it diluted, concentrated, or saturated? Well, it says here. Okay. Well, concentrated means that the solvent is holding more than the normal amount. So we got that already. Let's review the other two. Diluted is when there is less than a normal amount so like this it's lighter color than this right this is concentrated what we just wrote down it's holding a more than normal amount of the powdered sugar drink diluted there they put less okay this person doesn't like the strong <laughs> strawberry flavor okay so and then the last one saturated is is when the solvent is holding all of the solute that it possibly can dissolve. So it's the darkest, okay? Like my tea that I showed you in the other video, the <laughs> very strong tea. So 18, a solution that is blank has less than the normal amount, diluted, you got it. Number 19, a blank solution is holding all of the solute that it can possibly dissolve, saturated. Fantastic. We're doing great. All right, last thing, complete the organizer. Ways to increase the rate of dissolving. So ways to make the solute dissolve faster. Ways to make the sugar 
dissolve faster in our cup of water. For example, number 20. Increase the blank of the solute by crushing, crumbling, or cutting it into small pieces. So this was the example here, right? Cutting it, crum crumbling it, or cutting it into small pieces. A substance with greater surface area would dissolve more quickly. So one way to increase the surface area is to crush it. So increase the surface area of the solute by crushing it, crumbling it, or cutting it, karate chopping it. 21. Blank the solution. So when I was a Starbucks barista, I always had to stir it to make sure that the syrup or the sugars were spread out evenly. So 21, stir it up. And 22, increase the blank of the solvent. So this is when we talked about the cold water and the hot water. If you put sugar in cold and hot water, which one will dissolve faster? Hot. So increase the heat, right? Heat increases solubility. Woohoo! We did it! We are done for science today. If I am, if I'm correct, I believe this is actually the last section and we'll probably have to be doing some review and things like that. But great job, guys! As always, I know that this is not very, it's not very easy. It's not an ideal situation to learn about matter <laughs> through the computer. Um, it's kind of a more complicated subject, but you guys are doing really well. Make sure to watch the video that I put in the description box in our part one video. It's, I didn't make it. It's just another useful video that will give you a little more example about, little more examples about all of these, um, scientific facts that we learned today. All right, have a great rest of your morning and I'll see you again for spelling.